The creation of the Mattachine Society of Washington, D.C. was a turning point in gay rights. The introduction of activism and militancy in the movement by the Mattachine Society led to reform of discriminatory government policies that targeted homosexuals and the spread of the gay rights movement. We discovered that Americans consider homosexuality more harmful to society than adultery, abortion, or prostitution. It was just so shameful to be gay. You just didn't want to be that. It wasn't an option. You know, they were often disowned by their family. And they would have shamed you. It would have been worse than beating you. We were very good at being in the closet. Every American citizen has the right to be considered by his government on the basis of his own personal merit as an individual. In the 1950s, the United States was deep into the Cold War, and many Americans were terrified that communists had infiltrated the government. Senator Joseph McCarthy fabricated connections between communism and homosexuality. He said that homosexuals were physically unable to keep secrets and were at risk of divulging classified information. In an attempt to assuage the American people, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed Executive Order 10450, Security Requirements for Government Employment. It listed untrustworthiness as grounds for dismissal and denying employment, in addition to two more words that would warrant the dismissal of hundreds and hundreds. Sexual perversion. Before the order was written, three of Eisenhower's top advisors wrote him a joint memorandum that stated, The country is more concerned about the charges of homosexuals in the government than about communists. For this reason, known homosexuals were not hired by the government or the public. Uh, they the uh, policy of the department is that we do not employ homosexuals knowingly, and that if we discover homosexuals in our department, we discharge them. More people were discharged from the State Department for being gay than for being communist. People were just routinely fired if they were out. Homosexuality was officially classified as a mental disorder by the American Psychiatric Association in 1952. The APA listed homosexuality as a sociopathic personality disturbance. To the psychiatrists, we were loonies. To the lawyers and the legislators, we were criminals. Franklin Kameny graduated from Harvard University in 1956 with a PhD in astronomy. Took a job uh, here with Georgetown University and then a year later moved over to what was then called the Army Map Service. In December of 1957, Kameny was on an assignment in Mauna Loa, Hawaii, when he received a telephone call from his supervisors in Washington, D.C., telling him to return to the States at once. I was called in by two Civil Service Commission investigators. They said, we have information that leads us to believe that you're homosexual. Do you have any comment? I said, what's the information? They said, we can't tell you. I said, well, then I can't comment. And in any case, it's none of your business. Kameny was fired from his job soon after the meeting with the investigators. They were dismissing me for my homosexuality, he said. My dismissal amounted to a declaration of war against me by my government. Kameny became the first person to file a petition against the government for being fired solely based on sexual orientation. After losing in the Court of Appeals, his lawyers deemed his case hopeless. Dr. Kameny pushed on and submitted his petition to the Supreme Court in January of 1961, but they refused to hear it. Kameny's personal battle against the federal government had come to an end but he still sought to change the public's view and the government policies toward gay and lesbian people. In 1961, Frank Kameny and Jack Nichols Jr. founded a very aggressive, very public, independent chapter of the Mattachine Society in Washington, D.C. Frank and the other members decided to first focus their efforts on reversing the American Psychiatric Association's designation of homosexuality as a mental disorder. To remove homosexuality, as a type of illness was very important because when we talked to the Civil Service Commission, they saying, how can you tell me that you are a healthy person when in fact you're listed here? Getting rid of that listing was important to get other things accomplished. If that this notion that gay, lesbian people were sick could be cracked, 
that would go a long way towards acceptance in the larger culture. He would say to me, we are right and they are wrong. We are the experts. We were having success and it was becoming apparent that we were being successful. With the growing success of the movement to reverse the APA's designation of homosexuality as a mental disorder, Kameny saw the need to broaden the Mattachine Society's agenda to include fighting employment discrimination. He and the other members convinced the American Civil Liberties Union to take a firm stand on employment discrimination based on sexual orientation. In 1964, the National ACLU called upon the federal government to end its policy of rejection of all homosexuals on that ground alone. They called the Civil Service Commission's policy discriminatory, unfair, and illogical. Earlier gay rights organizations focused on delivering their message to the homosexual community. Kameny understood that in order to create equality, the homophile movement needed to further educate the heterosexual community about homosexuality and their cause. This new way of thinking was a turning point in the gay rights movement and led to the Mattachine Society's numerous public demonstrations. Kameny looked at the success of the NAACP and decided to integrate their means of radical yet peaceful protesting into the homophile movement. Kameny believed that publicly identifying yourself as gay was a very powerful thing, especially since homosexuals had for so long been in hiding. Frank was so intent that homosexuals should be seen as being just like everybody else. Then we started all these pickets, and we had our first picket for gay rights in the, in the world history in front of the White House. And during 65, we did a number of pickets, and then in July um, 4th, we went to, the, to Philadelphia and picketed in front of Independence Hall. Kameny insisted that all protests follow a strict dress code. He said, if we're picketing to be employed, then we have to look employable. We all had to dress quite properly. I mean, the guys had to wear jackets and ties. The women had to be in skirts or dresses. He always had permits when we did a demonstration, and we always had police protection. On July 27, 1969, patrons of the gay bar The Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village fought back against a routine police raid, and their fury erupted into the Stonewall riots. Frank Kameny's call to active militancy had manifested. He was the forerunner for Stonewater. Kameny sparked a revolution. His work and the founding of the Mattachine Society was a pivotal turning point in the gay rights movement. Frank laid the philosophical foundation for the gay rights movement. He was the one who coined the concept gay is good, the whole concept of there's integrity for the gay lifestyle. That was Frank's concept. Kameny's famous slogan, Gay is Good, encouraged the homosexual community to act on his idea of self-identification and self-advocacy. It rejected the idea that homosexuals had to rely on the heterosexual community to advocate for gay rights. On December 15, 1973, the American Psychiatric Association had a vote here that reversed their position uh, that homosexual was a mental illness. I mean, it was a single most important thing to happen because before that, the government in denying jobs could say that we were mentally ill and gradually everything changed. On July 3rd, 1975, all the work of Frank Kameny and the Mattachine Society was validated. I had the satisfaction of getting a phone call from a high civil service commission official saying the government has decided to change its policies to suit you. The changes that were made and the impacts carried forward over the years. Absolutely, it was a turning point. We wouldn't be where we are today. They're probably going to pass a same-sex marriage bill in Illinois. That was unthinkable in the 1950s. Frank was the most important and the most influential person in the history of the gay rights movement. He was widely viewed as the head of Washington gay rights movement. We influenced what was happening elsewhere. 